While I was researching and building my first electric skateboard, I came across components that seemed like great deals. I already had in mind what I was going for in that build, but I couldn't pass up on those deals just to see if they actually work. This board is a combination of those parts. The main pieces are the dual motor ESC and these 83mm hub motors. The rest of the board is basically made of standard components I found good deals on. Before getting into more detail with the components and how it's built, let's start with the performance to show this is actually a decent board. So now I'm going to take the board out for a ride. One nice thing about building your own electric skateboard is you can choose the deck you like. I'd have a hard time finding a pre-built board with a 30 inch deck that has a kicktail and nose like this one. The acceleration and braking are smooth. It's not quite as quick as a higher voltage system, but I really was surprised how much power it has. Running these 83mm motors at 24 volts definitely outperforms the original 32 volt board I built using smaller 70mm motors. The braking is pretty good, but not quite as powerful as my other 32 volt board that uses the VESC ESC or my Blink S2. So now let's see exactly how fast this board is. Now I'm going to do a speed test of my budget board. I'm going to use my usual street and I'm going to go in both directions just to make sure it's the same. Let's see how it does. Now I'm going to go in the eastbound direction. I gotta slow down slightly sooner on this side because there's an intersection here. So this is the original hill I went up with the last board. You can see some cars going down this hill. It's not a very steep hill, but it's it's kind of steep. And then after at the top, there's another second hill that's less steep. So I'm gonna go up both hills. Here I'm just rolling. Just to show that this is kind of a steep hill. Like I'm still just rolling. Now I'm braking. Make sure no cars. Now I'm going to go down the second hill. Definitely need the brakes. It got a bit slow on the steep hill, but significantly better than the 5 miles an hour I got with the 70 millimeter motors. Not on the brakes full, just a little bit. Just so it's not scary fast. This board certainly won't win any hill climbing competitions, but on moderate hills, it's really not bad. For our final test, let's see how far we can go on a full charge. Alright, so I'm going to plug this in. And then I'll put it, put the cover back on.
Looks good. Heading to the bike path that goes to the beach. So here's the entrance to the path. The wind is crazy strong. Might be hard to see, but this is a pretty rough road. Here's a hill. smoother on this part. Uh, that feels a little better. Almost there. I can see the bridge. This crosses over to the bike path that goes along the beach. I'm going to assume maybe it's a battery low warning and I'm going to stop my tracking right now for the distance and that way I'll just get an idea of what the range is for this battery. No more beeping. I guess that means we're all good. All right. Oh, it's really getting dark now. Whoa, this, <laughs> this battery's fresh, so it's like got much more kick now. Yeah, this is, this is definitely better than the past. battery that died along the way and now we're gonna see so it's about 3.36 no, something like that so that was after about a six mile ride where the the ESC started beeping at me the board is reasonably light at 13.11 pounds including the battery the hub motors have a solid build and definitely contribute most to the weight. Now let's take a closer look at the components and see how everything is put together. I found both the ESC and the motors on eBay and ordered them directly from China. When I first saw this ESC on eBay, it seemed unreal. I had just ordered two VESCs and a remote for a total of $280 and then saw this dual motor ESC with a remote for $62 including shipping. 
although I'd recommend paying the additional cost for express shipping since it took over a month to arrive with free shipping. A nice extra is it even includes an on-off switch. It's sold by a guy named Dicky Ho, who now goes by the eBay user eBoard-Shop. He has some other electric skateboard listings that also look good. I don't regret buying the Vesks because they're very configurable and definitely higher quality. But for a budget board, this ESC is an unbeatable deal. The voltage can be configured to 6S, 7S, or 10S. And for those not familiar with the terminology, the number before the S is simply the number of battery cells added in series. Each LiPo cell is between 4.2 volts and around 3 volts when fully charged to fully discharged. Although to make the battery last longer, most ESCs will avoid falling below the 3.5 to 3.3 volt per cell range. As an example, when a 6S battery is fully charged, it will be 6 times 4.2 volts, which is 25.2 volts, and a 10S battery will be 10 times 4.2 volts, which is 42 volts. The remote looks like one made by a company called Winning, but is probably a clone. It's been working well though. The switch on the back switches the board between slow and fast mode, and the button toggles between forward and reverse. The 83mm hub motors were another great deal, although not as great as the ESC. These were $96 plus $35 shipping for a total of $131. They're very solid and seem durable. I got a screw stuck in one motor on my range test and the motor still works perfectly, just a bit of minor damage to the rubber. I don't think these particular motors are available anymore on eBay, but the seller of the ESC has a good deal on a different hub motor kit I'll get back to later. In the description for these motors it says they're designed for 24 volts, so I used the 6S battery. The best part about using a 6S battery is I was able to use a single pack. This makes it easier to charge without the need for a parallel charging board. It's also easier to swap the battery when it runs out, as you saw back in the range test. Now that we've talked about the components, let's see how it's all put together. I'll start by showing all the tools I used to build this board. You'll need basic skateboard stuff like a skate tool, or a socket set or pliers could also work, a screwdriver, and a razor blade for the grip tape. For the electric skateboard specific parts, I used a drill, some drill bits, and a rotary tool. I got this one for about $25 at Harbor Freight. For the rotary tool, the only attachment I needed is the cutting wheel. For the drill bits, I used a half inch bit, a 5 32nd inch bit, and a 3 32nd inch bit. To put it all together, I used two of these sandwich containers I got from Target. The ESC nicely fits into one, and the battery in another. I cut the center part of the plastic lip on the bottom a bit using the rotary tool and left the lip along the sides where the handles are. That helped it better match the concave of the board. But it's definitely not a necessary step. It'll still work fine if you leave the lip as is. I used the drill to make two overlapping half inch holes to run the motor wires through. I then made another half inch hole for the power switch. When drilling through the plastic case, it helps to drill slowly to avoid cracking the plastic. For the ESC container, I used a few 3 8 inch long screws with a washer to directly attach the container to the board, and then added four more half inch long screws through the holes in the ESC. To raise the ESC off the plastic, I added some washers under it. I used a 5 32 inch drill bit to make the holes in the container, and a 3 32 inch drill bit to make the pilot holes in the deck. For the battery container, I used the same 3 8 inch screws. Be careful to keep the screws out of the way so they're not under the battery or cover them with something soft like adhesive rubber. Before I covered the screws, I noticed they were starting to damage the battery, which is something you want to be very careful of when using LiPo batteries. Here I should have put the screws closer to the edge of the container. I velcroed some pieces of leftover foam packaging I had to the sides of the container to keep the battery secured. An alternative way to mount the battery is to use Velcro, like I did with these aluminum strips I got at the hardware store. They can be easily cut to length using a rotary tool and the holes can be drilled using regular drill bits. To protect the battery it's also important to put some kind of padding over the screws. Drilling the screws through the velcro is not a good idea. As I learned the hard way, the weight of the battery will rip the screws right through. I showed this type of installation in more depth in my previous build video. The velcro has done a good job at keeping the battery secure and can work with almost any sized battery. Just be sure to use high strength velcro, and not the type for cable ties. 
To connect the battery to the ESC, I cut matching small notches in the base and lid of both containers. This way the power wire can nicely fit under the container lids. That's basically it. You can see there's nothing too difficult about putting this board together. This is more or less the main technique of building any hub motor electric skateboard. You just put it together like a regular skateboard and then secure the ESC and battery to the board. It's really not too difficult. The nice thing about this particular build is it didn't even require any soldering. Now let's do a quick tally of the total cost of the board. Mr. Dicky Ho, the guy selling the ESC on eBay, also started selling a hub motor kit that looks like a great deal. Of course I couldn't pass up on it and I ordered it too. What I really like about it is it supports 10S voltage. Along with its 90mm diameter wheels, I'm hoping it'll perform very well. We'll see. I'll post a video on a build using them soon. So here it is. A guy in China who goes by Kirin Eboard is currently making and selling a board called the Meepo board that appears to use the same ESC and motors Mr. Ho is selling. The Meepo board sells for around $260 plus $100 shipping. That's a very good deal for a pre-built board. The Meepo site also sells individual components, which is very helpful. Maybe I'll end up buying one of these too, although I probably shouldn't buy any more electric skateboards for a while. I'll put links to everything I talked about in the description. Overall I was pleasantly surprised with the performance and simplicity of this budget build. Everything easily fit together with minimal modification. Just a bit of drilling holes and cutting. All I need to do now is just plug in the battery, turn on the switch, and ride. It is a bit more work than buying a pre-built board and there's usually no warranty, but since you know how to build the board and the parts are so affordable, it's no problem to just order replacement parts and fix it yourself whenever needed. And best of all, you can customize it to make it just the way you want. I'd like to hear if you're considering a build or have some tips from a build you've done. I hope this video was helpful and shows it's really not too difficult or expensive to build your own electric skateboard. Thanks for watching.